Hey guys, Kat Kahn here with Studio Sweat and Studio Sweat On Demand here to talk about the Renegade Row. Here with Ellie, trainer Hi. Ellie, popular trainer with Studio Sweat and Studio Sweat On Demand. Uh, we got this question in from Heather Wilcox from Virginia and then a bunch of other people chimed in saying I have trouble uh, with the Renegade as well. So we're going to talk about the Renegade uh, row with and without the push-up. The first okay. thing I'm going to suggest to you is that you use hex dumbbells. <laughs> Because if you use dumbbells that are round, they just have the you know, propensity, it's Big Word Friday, to roll, okay? So hex dumbbells. Um, and then the first thing that you do is you get yourself in a good plank position. So before you even start adding the element of the row or the push-up, we wanna get in a solid push-up or plank position. So Ellie, come on. You be oh, my model right. today. Woo, woo. Okay, so she's gonna get herself in a nice plank position. And then she's gonna hold on to those hex dumbbells like we just talked about. Okay, beautiful. So she's got her hands shoulder width apart. I will say that it's okay to take your hands a little bit wider. A lot of people need that little bit wider base um, in order to have the strength to get through this exercise. This is not easy. It's not easy. So step number one, make sure your core is nice and tight. It's not just all about the upper body. So I always tell people brace for a punch, Ugh! okay? Now your core is nice and tight, but you should still be able to breathe until yep. I really punch you and then you won't be able to breathe anymore. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, next step is you're going to take, are you okay? Are you already yes. shaking? Okay. Let's this start hard. Break. Take a break. See? It Ellie agrees with you that it's hard. Okay. Next step. Okay. okay. You're Ready? in your plank position. You're chasing that plank. You're going to take that elbow and you're going to drive it higher than your back to where the cap of the dumbbell comes just to your chest. Beautiful. As you do that, you're gonna try and keep your shoulders square to the ground, your hips square to the ground, okay? So in other words, you don't want to open at the shoulders, okay, or the hips. Try to keep them square. A good way to do that, and you can take a break, I know it's hard, okay. A good way to uh, do that is to actually try to push the hand that's planted into the ground. So you're actually trying to force it into the ground, almost exaggerating it. So as I row, okay, I'm like this, I'm actually taking those knuckles and really thinking about driving them into the ground as I keep those whole, uh, shoulders and hips square, okay? Now, good. Watch for the elbow coming higher than the back. If the elbow cannot come higher than the back, your weight's too heavy, go get a different set, okay? If you okay. can't get, yeah, if you can't get, how many reps in would you say grab a lighter set? Eight? Yeah, eight to 12, yeah. If you can't yeah. get at least eight, you might want to grab a lighter set. The idea to build up to heavier weight. Yes, absolutely. Now, people like to drop to their knees for the Renegade Row, yep. and that's totally fine, especially if there's a push-up in it. So you can drop to the knees and do your Renegade Row from here. Okay, same thing, driving the elbow higher than the back, pushing into that hand, excellent. My suggestion for those of you that are adding the push-up, and you are a little bit stronger, you've already built up that strength. You can do the push-up from your toes or from your knees, okay? But when you're coming in to do the row again, I always suggest rows from toes, okay? So, let's get it. Can you add the push-up, Ellie? Take your hands a little wider, I think okay. it'll help. Try it from the knees to start. Go ahead, okay. from the knees, do the push-up. Oh. Okay, now come up to the toes, rows from the toes, pull, Pull. Cool. Get your elbow higher than your hand next time. Good. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no. Rose Shoot. from the toes. Rose from the toes. Rose just, from the toes. There you go. Perfect. And then gently drop, drop the knees for that push-up. Good. Those look really great. Okay. Woo. So, my suggestion, and, and do you, do you want to show what it looks like from the toes to add the push-up? You do. You want me to show it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. I'll show from the front angle. She's the best. Okay. So Ooh. again, no, I'm not the best. I'm gonna take my hands a little wider because I have a shoulder issue, but just a tad bit wider. Drop it down, push it up, row. Pushing into that hand, row, set it down. The other thing I want you guys to think about is a real slow descent on that eccentric movement. Oh, good. Thank you very much, okay? Um, alternating sides, I always recommend that. If you're gonna do the push-up, my suggestion to you is that you alternate the arm that leads the row that makes sense. after every push-up yeah. because it does change the um, exercise a little bit. Um, the, the last thing I really want to say on this is that it's okay to build your way up to these things. 
but a lot of people, once they start from the knees, they think they stay on the knees. So again, rows from the toes. Ah, that's it, that's it. All right, you guys, I hope that helped you, helped you all. And if you have any other questions, just comment uh, on our Facebook page, Instagram page, or uh, shout out to us uh, via email. Thank you so much for joining me, Ellie. Thank you for having me. You bet. For those Bye. body sculpting, fat torching workouts, check out Studio Sweat On Demand, or come into Studio Sweat in San Diego. It's raining fire.